Hello, and welcome to Lecture 5. Today, we're going to talk about how to structure your program. Have you ever wondered how people program very large applications? Applications as large as something that requires millions and millions of code. How do they do it? This is precisely what we're going to discuss today. How do you approach programming that's larger than a couple of lines? How do you structure your program so it's easy to think about them? So, how do people program large applications? To tell you the honest to God truth, they steal it. But, but legally. Let me explain. Writing a program is like writing a research paper. You gather what you want from different sources and put them together into a paper. Except in programming, you just kind of copy what they write. So, how do you steal it? I, whoops, I meant borrow from other people's code. You see, there's a catch. A, they have to let you steal it. It's not stealing if they let you, right? And B, they have to be written in the form of functions. Functions? That might sound familiar to you if you have watched the previous classes or if you have programmed before. In the last class, when you push the button, it calls a function. Let's go back to the code from the last class and check it out. Let's quickly run the program so you remember what it does. As you can see, when you push the button, it calls the functions. Now what if you don't have the buttons? Can you still use the functions? Yes, you can. Let's remove the buttons. So if we run the program now, you should only see the window. Let's try to run it. Now, if we want to call the two functions, easy. We just have to include the name of the functions inside our program. First, we'll include the function call me. Next, we have to include the second function, which is second function. Now, if we run the program, you should see a label as well as two lines printing out in the interpreter. See how the label is being created by the second function? When the program is running, it sees the name of the function, runs the function, sees the next function, and runs the next function, and so on and so forth. So now you might be thinking, we're not stealing, we're using our own functions. And you're right, right now you're not stealing, but we can. As long as they're writing in functions, we have the ability to take other people's functions. Let's clarify by playing a game together. Now, this is a picture of me and Stacy. Hi, everybody. Stacy is going to write two functions, and I'm going to steal them. And you get to watch the entire process. I'm going to start with Stacy. She's going to program two functions. The first function, she's going to take two numbers, add them together, and spit out their sum. The second program she's going to program, she's going to take two numbers, multiply them together, and spit out their product. First, Stacy defines that she's running a Python program. Then, she defines a function name adder. It will take two numbers called num1 and num2. A variable name added will be the summation of num1 and num2. When the function is done, it will return, whoever call it, the value of added. And for the second function, she would define a function name multiply. It will take two numbers called num1 and num2. A variable name multiple will be num1 multiplied by num2. When the function is done, it will return the product of the number or multiple. The first function, as you can see, will add two numbers together while the second function multiplies two numbers together. 
So after writing the function, Stacy is happy and she saves the program as stacy.py. She will save it on the desktop. As you can see, it's right here on the desktop called stacy.py. Okay, so now Che comes along and needs to program something that solves a math problem. 3 plus 4 plus 2 times 5. Obviously, this is a very simplified question, but you'll get the point. So Che goes and starts a program from knowing Stacy. Che knows that she programmed a bunch of functions in a program named Stacy.py. So Che decides to use it to help him solve his problem. Watch closely. This is how he does it. He first defines that he's running a Python program. Then he comments on the problem he needs to solve, which is 3 plus 4 plus 2 times 5. Now Che uses Stacy's functions by importing it. Similar to importing TK into library, Che imports Stacy.py, the program she just programmed, except you leave out the .py. Now that Che has access to Stacy's functions, he calls the function adder and tell it to add 3 and 4 together, and the value will equal to first. Then he calls multiply to multiply 2 and 5 together and let it equal to second. And finally, he adds first and second together using the adder function and let it equal to final. And lastly, he prints out the value of the final so we can see if it's working correctly. If everything went well, it should print out 17. First, we'll have to save the program in the same location as stacy.py. In this case, she saved on the desktop, so we'll have to save it in the desktop too. It's very important that they're in the same location, or else your program can't find stacy.py. Now that we have saved it, let's run the program. Alright, I think it worked. 17, um, I think that's right. We have successfully taken somebody else's code. Good job. That was a good job for my mom which is hard to come by these days. In this lecture, we first talked about how to program large applications. As a conclusion, we decided that we should just borrow them. To borrow, they have to let us, and they have to be written in the forms of functions. So we checked out how to run functions and how to write functions, and we spent the rest of the lecture learning how to borrow gracefully. By the way, this class does not encourage you to borrow too much. For the next lecture, we will learn what's available to us and what we can borrow. For your homework, I want you to write a function that averages three numbers together. Once you have written the function, try to call it somewhere else. Like always, if you have any trouble writing the function, you can go to the chapter and look up the answer. Well, folks. This is all the time we have for today. This is Che. Until next time.